Good day everyone! By the way, I am Jean E. Palalon from BS at English and for today's video, I will be discussing um, Ausubel's four processes of meaningful verbal learning or the subsumption theory. Now, let us proceed. Our objectives is to define subsumption theory of Ausubel. Learners will be able to differentiate the four processes of Ausubel's meaningful verbal learning and application and benefits of Ausubel's learning. But before that, let me first introduce to you who is David Paul Ausubel. David Paul Ausubel was born on 1918 in Brooklyn, New York. He attended the University of Pennsylvania where he first received his bachelor's in pre-med and psychology. He later attended Middlesex University where he earned his medical degree and then went on to receive his PhD in developmental psychology through Columbia University in 1950. David also served in the military through the U.S. Public Health Service. He eventually spent all of his time and studies to psychiatric practice where most of his work was influenced by Piaget's cognitive development work. He believed that the most important single factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. And this is also known as the subsumption theory. That in order to make verbal learning meaningful, it is important that all sub-concepts will have to be included under the main concept. What is a subsumption theory? A subsumption theory, a learner absorbs new information by tying it to existing concepts and ideas that they have already acquired. In that definition, it simply means that a student can effectively acquire new knowledge if it already exists. And that only unique information that stands out within the lesson is committed to memory. Osabel prescribing the procedure in making verbal learning meaningful since we all know that most of the classroom learning is through verbal learning. And here are the four processes of meaningful verbal learning. And these are derivative learning, correlative learning, superordinate learning, and combinatorial learning. Let us start first to the first process of meaningful verbal learning of Ausubel, which is the derivative learning. Now, what do you mean by derivative learning? Or let us first define it. Derivative learning is when you add new things to the existing cognitive structures. Let's take this as an example of a derivative learning. Um, suppose you were acquainted to the concept of vegetables like um, lettuce, cabbage, and eggplant that is sour, bitter, salty, and sweet. So if you see or hear about um, vegetables, you can directly say that it is sour, bitter, salty, and sweet or anything that um, describes the concept of vegetables and that concept you already knew is your existing knowledge or your old knowledge um, about that um, specific vegetables. Now, supposedly, you encountered another kind of vegetable vegetable which is exotic vegetable since it is exotic you are not familiar with it for example a broccoli you are not familiar with this but you already know that this is also a vegetable because it powers your existing knowledge of vegetables and that is your new knowledge in other words, if you combine your existing knowledge to your new knowledge, it will result to learning. And that is how derivative learning or subsumption is. Now, let's move on to the second process of a meaningful verbal learning, which is the correlative subsumption. A correlative subsumption or learning is when you add new details to what you already know, usually a higher order concept. 
Using the same examples of the first one, suppose you are acquainted to the concept of a vegetables, but you encounter the nutritious content of a vegetables, like the given example, the dietary fiber and vitamins that it contains. In order to accommodate this new information, you have to extend your concept of a vegetables to the previous concept of that vegetables. Unlike in the derivative subsumption, which only acquires basic knowledge, here in correlative subsumption, you are creating higher order concept using your basic knowledge. Therefore, it expands your thinking strategies in order to understand, since it reaches the higher order concept, and that is a correlative subsumption. New material is an extension or elaboration of what is already known. Now, let us proceed to the third process of a meaningful verbal learning, which is the superordinate learning. A superordinate learning is that you already familiar with the things but didn't know the concept itself until it was thought. Let's take this as an example. Imagine you are already familiar with fruits, dairy, vegetables, grains, and meat, but you didn't know what are those foods until you were thought that these were all kinds of healthy diet foods. In this case, you already know about these examples, but you didn't know the concept itself until it was thought to you. Therefore, in superordinate learning, a new concept is learned under which established ideas can be subsumed. Let us proceed to the last part or the last one, which is the combinatorial learning. In combinatorial learning, the newly acquired knowledge combined with prior knowledge to enrich the understanding of both concepts. For example, to teach someone about how human get energized throughout the day. Suppose he or she acquires that knowledge that, because of gasoline, the car can be able to move and oxygen fuels a car. And using the previous acquired knowledge, you can relate that in his or her new knowledge. This is because their concepts are related to each other and you can also directly say that this type of subsumption is learning by analogy. Now, let's proceed to the application and benefits of Ossible's meaningful verbal learning. Ossible believes that complex intellectual processes or thinking, language, problem solving, concept formation are the major aspects of learning and that primary emphasis should be placed on organization of experiences. These cognitive structures are hierarchically organized in teams of highly inclusive conceptual clusters and their which are subsumed less inclusive subconcepts. Implications center on issues of philosophy, curriculum, including that the most general ideas should be presented first, followed by progressively differentiated material and classroom teaching, including that advanced organizers such as illustrations, analogies, and concepts and terms already familiar to the learner should be used to strengthen cognitive structure and enhance retention of new information. So that would be all for my discussion, which is the four processes of a meaningful verbal learning of Osabel, and I hope that you have learned from it. Thank you and God bless.